I was wondering if there's a big open hole, but no. no. <laughs> there, there is there, though, where, is there? Where, uh, where it's all fenced off. I say yes. That's the what? That's the way he went in. Yes, well, I say. <laughs> Some of this is just boil heaps, I guess. All these lumps and bumps. Well, they're the buildings. Right. As well. Huh. Foundation yeah. for all the buildings that were there. Right. That's the way he went to, you know, he said you have to slither down there. Yes. Some years ago I went on another tour and we ended up on the other side of this main road and you could look down a really big hole. Yeah. You could sort of drop a double-decker bus down in that one. Oh. I don't know if we're going to do that today. That was just a little walk in from the, what was the storehouse for the miners. That field is the one that contains the, and there's, it's taped off, but that marks the shaft of the Carnarvon mine on the right hand side. You'll see a tape round a little copse, and that's going round a shaft here. Now, Pull in just on the left here, just before this gateway, so we are right opposite these old structures. That's excellent. That will do quite well. Um, not particularly impressive, but um, this is known as the Bampton, Bampton Road Stores. Um, early on, once the incline was almost finished, Two of the railway company, a chap called Prosser and another one called Williams, um, formed what was called the Watchet Trading Company. And they decided they would lease this extra two acres of land from the Earl of Carnarvon and build um, a trading point. And they built two, two buildings with a gateway in between. Um, but the purpose was really to provide bulk uh, building materials for up on the hill and they could supply drainage pipes, slates, bricks, um, any of the sort of heavy materials that you might need transported up the railway. Um, but they didn't intend to operate it themselves, um, they would let the building out for some other entrepreneur to, to, to run for them. Um, opened in 1861 and there's a picture here, um, fairly, you can see that one there, shows the two buildings in their pretty much abandoned state, but that probably dates from about 1920 period. And you'll see on this left hand side there's a stone abutment, and that is because the railway, there's a branch of the railway that comes in at first floor level, enables them to unload goods onto the first floor of the structure and if you look at the building you'll see apertures uh, on the far side which are the um, the openings. This side all that's left now is just this right hand pillar of masonry because um, it has collapsed. Um, just a few years later they were in that sort of state where all the roof and all the timber and things have been robbed away and of course now you've had another hundred years of neglect and what you see today is all that is left of what was the, the Bampton Road stores. They also, we'll only see them as we drive by, built two lime kilns. Um, very much for the same reason as I explained when we were down at Trebra. Um, there's no limestone here and it was needed um, for building purposes and they brought two types of limestone up here for firing. Um, they brought up the Watchet limestone, the Lias stone. One of the reasons for that is when that Lias stone, because it's um, actually not a pure limestone, it uh, has a high percentage of silica and alumina with it. When that is fired it produces uh, what we call hydraulic lime and the hydraulic lime 
is very useful because it is one that will set uh, below water and was used on a lot of uh, construction work. The other lime, the white lime, usually produced from a purer uh, limestone, um, a lot of that was brought over from South Wales. Um, and you think, well, why bring stone across the channel? Um, one of the reasons being is that as, as iron ore was taken over, sometimes they would bring back slates or bring back coal, but also they had to ballast the vessels and it was often used limestone as, as ballasting on the vessels, which could then be sold on again. And that's why you'll find in Watchet a lot of the uh, houses built around West, particularly in West Street, the, whilst it's limestone that is used in the buildings, it is not local limestone. It's limestone from other areas that's been brought in purely by the vessels themselves. OK, well, um, if there's any questions, then we'll, uh, we'll move on. And we'll now go to Burrow Farm uh, via Naked Boys Lane. And I say I just will briefly point out the the lime kilns, and you have to look to your right through the wind. You're through the trees. You'll see the two lime kilns. It's fortunate at this time of the year there aren't the leaves on the trees that you can uh, just make them out. Now behind that, and whilst I say we now can't go in there, um, is that is the Carnarvon mine where there are two two open shafts. Uh, for those who might be interested, is that on the right hand side there is Beverton Pond, which is the source of the River Tone. So it rises at this point from a natural spring. Of course, that's the river that's given us all the trouble flooding on the Somerset levels as it goes, makes its way down to the Parrot. So it just disappears? It goes down, it goes through the Clatworthy Reservoir, oh, and right. then the outfall of the reservoir uh, carries on down to form the tone. Was that greatly flooded here as well? Huh? Was it greatly flooded there as no. well? No. no. No, but just you come in the, summer, the in the summer, you'll see virtually no water in that oh. pond at all. Oh. But it's, this year, it's, it's come right up in, in that. Right, now we're just coming down to what's called uh, the junction, which will turn right in the bottom of this dip, which is called Robra Gate. Now, Robra Gate, by its very nature, it was, again, one of the gateways on the toll road, because this was the toll road. Is this the turn into Wimbledon Lake as yes. well? Oh, yep. right. yes. Yeah. Mm. But if, the, if you look at the post, it says Robra, Robra Gate. Right. People think, well, what's the gate? But it, it was because it was a toll. Right, right. right. Yes, we've driven down to the lake, what, which you can see in the distance, I think. Yeah. Didn't realise it was associated with the, the mines. Some of this dip where the large Scots pine is, we'll need to turn right handed into making boys land. Isn't there a story about that name as well? Yes, yes, <laughs> the story relates to various stories, Harry gets his name. There is another little uh, exploratory addict uh, called Gurney level which is down in the coombe here but it doesn't go in very far it's only a few yards that it goes in um, heading towards the burrow farm but they they never seem to uh, to drive that add it very far and did the narrow gauge railway come all the way into here no narrow gauge railway terminated um, at, by the Bampton Road stores then right because it had to connect back to the incline yes Actually there? It's the engine house. It's the only engine house left, beam engine house left on the Brendan Hills. That's the one you can see from 
Yes. Yeah. Are we going in like parallel with that main road now? We are running at right angles. We'll turn and we'll we'll come at right angles to the to the road. We cross the um, the mineral line. Oh, right. What we've done is just come round on a large uh, loop. Mm. And where does this actually end up? This road. This ends up by uh, Smenny's cottages. Mm. Those those three miners' cottages. Oh, right. Is it a dead end? No, no, this goes through. This mm. goes through to the road, which we will take once we've been down to mm. Far and Far. Good job we've got a knowledgeable driver over there. Yeah. That's where the sign, sign board is. And what you can oh, park goodness. just in that gateway just there. Oh, That's right. the only place where you can pull in or you've got to go further down and then to the right hand side, but it's easier just to park. Oh, this is where we're gonna go. Fascinating. And what is this big depression then? This is the railway cutting. Because this what oh, they've done is they've taken the girder bridge out right. and backfilled it with, with soil. Oh, I see. So, you can still see the abutment of the bridge here. Here's the stonework going back through. Fascinating. You've got to watch, this is the yeah. style that's quite steep. Yeah. It's a bit of a step down. Right. Oh, I didn't realise the cutting for the railway was so deep. Oh, yeah. So this was the the second the extension of the railway yeah. um, in 1864 because they had got to the top of the incline yeah. and to the the Rallys Cross site. Right. But then it was the it, it depended upon the economics of the mines to the west as to whether they extended the line. Mm -hmm. However, the Gutworthy mine was proving to be uh, very productive, and therefore they decided. To extend uh, extend the line through. So in fact, really, we are further on than that stores area. Yes. Yeah, the stores are back back to the east. Yes. yes. Yeah, you can walk back on the other side of this ink uh, bank. You can walk back to the stores. Right. On the other side, there's another public footpath there now. Interesting. Do you ever come across lumps of coal or anything interesting down there? You can find there? iron, lumps of can iron. Can you? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but see, most of they had hard cutting through here because it's all through quartz. Oh, yeah. Lots of quartz. Remember at that talk, talk you gave, you had those enormously heavy lumps of iron? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be wonderful to come across one of those somewhere. I mean, part of the contract they had to build to do this um, was not only doing the, the cutting, but they also had to do all these banks and plant all these beech trees, both oh. sides, oh, and right. stock-proof fences. Cool. A lot of money was spent on this. A lot of money. I yeah. It's a pity it wasn't a great profit for everybody. Was this single track or double track along oh, here? It was wide enough to do two yeah, tracks, it looks like but they only ever fitted yeah. one track. Mm -hmm. Come on, messing the work, taking all this out. Or with picks and shovels. Picks and shovels. No JC, please. No, no. <laughs> this was done by a contractor from Wibbeliskam, a chap called John Gunn. <laughs> How long did it take him then? Uh, they did this in less than a year, this piece. Mm. And how long is it? Uh, well, this carries on from right well, the way through to Gutworthy. Mm. But you've got and that's cut. about a 25 minute walk. Yeah, well, we're, we're only going to go to Borough Farm. Right. It then carries on further. God, not many people know about this at all. But you can see the amount of work they did. That side, they had to stone up the side, so it's all got a dry stone wall all the way along. Goodness. Must have cost a few pounds. Yeah. You imagine a modern little fun narrow gauge railway running along here. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What about water for the engines up here? Uh, Gutworthy. Came out of the Gutworthy mine. Right. The water tower of Gutworthy. Uh-huh. Well, I've never seen a photograph of this it's all cutting. No. Um, are there such things? Yeah. There's a photograph there of it? There are some photographs, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at that most thicker book. Is so clearly defined. That's a sight worth seeing, that is. Look at it all. Big the trees. You can there. see <laughs> like the original soil level, that dark brown, and then what they've put on the top to form the banks. Mm -hmm. And then it was, say, planted out with a stock stock-proof fence. Cool. This is recent damage, is it, for the storms? This is this winter. Yeah. All, all this is this winter. Cool. That's quite a long walk. Style to go over. The oh, was explaining that just in this field there, in between these two tree roots, there was a shaft to the mines. Yeah. He's also saying that he was coming along here one day when the wind was so strong they had to hang on to the fence there or they'd be blown into the cutting. You can imagine it. The things are levelling out now. Lots of cut. Wood here, I'm not sure if that's as a result of the storm damage or what the history of that wood is. Quite remote from anywhere here. Would have thought they'd just come in and cut it up for firewood. Oh, look at this, that's fascinating. Yeah, an engine house. It's not well trodden either. Wow, look at that. Yeah. And the sign pointed there, but there was no steps. There was no steps. So as I say, there were four four shafts. There was another shaft that was in this location, probably where the depression is, which was on the north road. And then so the gundries, which is way up where that hollow is up there. Um, and then there's a, another shaft up on top, and then the sixth shaft. And so, in 1978, by the way, it's not actually part. This building on the side here, the um, this was the what's called the miners drive. Part of the uh, reason for this is that um, the Metalliferous Mining Acts of 1872 required them to have better facilities for miners and therefore they had to change from their work clothes to their sort of you know day clothes. Yeah. And this building was their in effect their changing changing area. So this would be heated by hot water pipes coming from the boiler house. The boiler house was the other side of the engine house, um, but you can tell by the size of it, it's a relatively small mine. There was probably less than 20 people on this particular site. Now, there's photographs, and again, if you look at the photograph, Here it was in 1961, the, the building was here. That's how much has been robbed away. Oh. That back wall was there up until three years ago. Oh, and that's how much is, the is collapsing and the stone gets, keeps being robbed away to use for gateways, to put into tracks. So it's gradually... Uh, bit by bit uh, disappearing but that's how it was in 61. Uh, 
fantastic.